Hey everyone, Phil here. So, just want to do an update because uh, I got some really good news. Um, I'm expecting my first child. So, yeah, we uh, don't know the sex yet, but um, it should be coming in October. So, uh, yeah, um, it's been uh, a crazy few weeks uh, trying to get used to uh, the fact that it's real and it's coming now. So yeah, I can't wait. Um, but uh, yeah, I need to make some more m money really. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, it, it's given me a massive new perspective though on the fact that my own survival uh, against the cancer that um, I was diagnosed with uh, over two years now um it's my survival is now gone beyond um beyond the importance of myself i i now have to sub make sure that i stay healthy so that i can be a good father and uh and be there we've got 420 coming up soon I'm hoping that we can do something uh, in north wales cannabis club for that uh, but uh, nothing's organised as of yet, but I'm sure we'll get down to something. We're really hoping to do some more of the podcasts, really, because uh, the last one we did, uh, it was, you know, it was received quite well in the community. So uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, watching it and uh, contributing your ideas to it. Um, I've been watching quite a few Simper Carter's, uh, his, his live uh, Facebook videos and um, I suggested to him uh, one of the ideas we're looking at doing here which is to take the, uh, well, take the media out onto the street and to um, approach people in the public and just ask them if they would like to be interviewed and then hopefully we can film them for the uh, Cannabis Social Club podcasts and to kind of see, just uh, get a public presence um, in our community's media and to, it may even be a great way to challenge some of the, you know, mistruths out there and to help uh, educate the public a bit better on um, why um, cannabis is medicinal because I'm sure if we were to go out into the town centre any day we'll meet uh, people that are very supportive, we'll meet people who are very against it and um, to be honest it's the people that are more against it that I'm more interested in talking to um, when we get around to doing these kind of formats of podcasting um, and I think it's really important I mean you, you'll see it like if you watch the news like a certain news piece they'll just randomly interview people in a town centre this gives us an opportunity to um, find out a kind of snapshot of society and uh, possibly even in help us find new ways of tackling some of the resistance that we get. Um, <clears throat> in terms of diseases in general and combating diseases, um, my goals are very much in science communication as I've recently written an uh, wrote an article that I put up on Steemit um, Normally, I, I do a, a blog each week on Steemit um, that's been kind of like uh, looking back at what happened when I was first diagnosed and just going through that first year in 2016 and how I got through it all. Um, I think I'm up to part um, 23 now and there's probably about like four pages in each article. Um, so they're kind of more of like a biographical, autobiographical thing that I'm doing at the moment. Um, but every now and then I'll do a kind of general um, contemporary article about things that are just bothering me, whether it's resistance to cannabis or um, something happening in the news that is 
uh, I feel is probably in the way of my goals in trying to help other people beat these diseases. Um, and ever, ever since I went to the patients at Parliament, it, um, my goal in trying to help other patients has just, oh, it, it's just blown up incredibly because uh, I was in the papers the week before I went down there and um, now uh, that was just explaining my story and how cannabis helped me beat cancer um, and since then I've had a lot of people each week contact me randomly on Facebook and it's either that they're going through cancer and they want help uh, or most cases it's uh, a caregiver like they're they have a family member who's affected and they want some advice on how to get cannabis safely. Uh, and I'm trying my best to um, deliver for these people because it's very difficult because obviously with cannabis being illegal in the UK, um, I'm having to advise these people uh, that the only way to have a fighting chance is to put your health first, put your life first. Um, and so I just always tell these people to join their local cannabis social club because it's within the cannabis social clubs where um, there is a very proactive in trying to combat scammers. It's, it's kind of one of those communities where if somebody is a scammer out there and they're trying to take advantage of uh, sick people by selling them uh, fake oil or overcharging them. Um, word of that spreads very quickly and they don't get very far. So the cannabis social clubs in the UK headed up by the UK CSC is, is literally the best uh, route uh, that I can recommend uh, newly diagnosed people go down uh, if they wish to medicate themselves uh, via cannabis and to improve their endocannabinoid system. Um, uh, one of the things that really bothered me recently was uh, yesterday there was a story that popped up. Um, my friend Andrew Scarborough, he was talking about Goldman Sachs uh, asked in a biotech research report is curing patients a sustainable business model and for that to me this is the most offensive part of uh, the aspect of the world we're living in today and what we've allowed society to become i've made one of those random articles in the past on steam it challenging uh, the status quo um it i mean the Capitalism has become very much a, an orthodox in that I've noticed since I wrote this article kind of saying that things like UBI, which are going to come in in the future, which are universal basic income, it, all these things are inevitable. Um, it, and it all starts from the fact that we already have um, a chance of abundance um, with the fact that we now have reusable rocket technology thanks to people like Elon Musk. But this means that in the future it's now foreseeable that we could get probes to the asteroid belt and to start mining uh, the asteroid belt. Um, um, and it's... Uh, you, there is also a push to colonise Mars and even the Moon uh, all these things sound very outlandish, but I promise you these these are very sort of within the next decade. These things are going to be on your news screens, on mainstream uh, news. Um, and these are going to mean big changes for society in general. And that my point is that that Goldman Sachs story, it shows that we don't live in capitalism. It shows what we actually are living in today, especially since the last major financial crash. We live in corporatism. And what corporate, why corporatism is a bad thing and why it's different to capitalism 
is that in capitalism is basically just the idea that you have free enterprise and um, you, you have a free market, um, goods should be able to be uh, exchanged uh, without with, with less restrictions and so on, and people should be able to make as much money as they are able to. Um, but corporatism is much more sinister thing in the um, it's it's worse than communism because what it means is corporations that are very large can avoid tax and they can also make laws with their powerful lobbyists um, because right now the, the the White House is and even Parliament is absolutely full of these lobbyist uh, organizations and they work on behalf of these corporations and they play with laws and they make laws um, and nobody's elected these uh, people and so this is there's nothing democratic about corporatism um, and I'm really trying to push back against this status quo because what's happening is causing this whole corporatism thing this um, this uh, it's, it's like a Trojan's horse kind of thing happening in society today and that I believe it's causing things to happen like Brexit for example now a lot of people say that Brexit is the most democratic thing that has happened in generations but to me um, it's basically the biggest hoodwink by corporations that has happened in our history in that the people that are really going to benefit from it are these large multinational corporations that don't have to bother with all these um, restrictions that will uh, then apply uh, once we leave the European Union. One of the problems with this corporatism is that it relies on perpetual war and some of you, um, if you've ever heard of uh, a show like Jimmy Dore, um, he talks about these things a lot. Uh, I really recommend his show. I've learned so much uh, watching his stuff. Um, and, you know, he, he often says um, he finds it bizarre that he's just this jag-off nightclub comedian who's been forced to... Uh, tell the tell the news uh, tell the truth in the news and the reason why his show is becoming so popular is because the mainstream media make it so easy for him because they because all he has to do is just tell the truth and you know obviously people flock to that and when these articles go up online uh, about cannabis and there's somebody who's afraid of cannabis because they buy into all the propaganda um, as soon as they say something ridiculous, um, it doesn't take long before they're swamped by um, common sense people who are just debunking all the propaganda. Um, Arthur Jones, our local uh, police crime commissioner for North Wales, he often puts up articles that go into the newspapers regarding why cannabis should be legalised. And... Um, yeah, he'll, he'll get things like people saying, oh, I'll never vote for you again. Uh, you should be locking people up like that, which, you know, it's just stupid because it's a waste of police time because it, it's even like what happened in Durham recently. They had to shut down one of their events um, because the police showed up just because people had reported their event to the police because of the smell of cannabis, uh, because it made them afraid. Um, well, I'll tell you what will make you afraid is being told by a neurosurgeon that you've only got two years to live um, and that the standard of care only provides a 4% chance of survival. Um, so I'm really on a mission to kind of make sure that, like, when these new people contact me asking me for help and advice, I'm not just trying to get them to just turn to cannabis obviously it's about the ketogenic diet as well there's as Andrew says you know there's more more than one way to skin a cat sort of thing but the thing is is that there's so much pushback and 
dogma against cannabis when it's a very helpful thing and and although it doesn't work universally against cancer it has a high rate of working and that's something that must be explored by patients and patients should have a right to explore that and also researchers should have a right to explore why that is the case and how they can make it be the case for everyone else uh, by tweaking um, and, and just finding new ways to get cancer cells to react more to um, cannabinoids like THC and CBD. I want to thank everybody that um, has subscribed to my YouTube channel. Um, I mean, I've been making these random uh, videos now for like just over two years really since I was first diagnosed. Um, so I have over 121 subscribers now. Um, I mean, to me, that feels like a lot, and I'm, I'm very touched by that, because I, I never expected to get more than, say, 30 people, I guess. Um, I made a, a video every single day of my radiotherapy. I don't know if I'm the only person that's ever done that, uh, but I certainly know there's other patients that have done video blogs that are more successful than mine. Um, and I, I just... Yeah, I'm, I'm just very grateful to all the people that message me on uh, my channel um, and you've been so, most most of you have been so very supportive and uh, even the people uh, in the comments section on BBC Three's uh, documentary Dying for Weed, which I took part in during that first year. Um, so much support and I just can't thank you guys enough. I'm not going to be putting up a Patreon thing though because I just don't want to make money from all this. I, the only is this isn't about money. This is for me. This is about. Although I got a kid on the way, maybe I should start thinking about that more. But um, yeah, I, this is about science communication for me. That's the most important thing, and the most important thing for me as well, being a just as a humanist, is that I want people. I want everybody to have a chance to beat the disease beat diseases like cancer the way I have. I, I want other people to have as much success as I've had and the survivors that I know, which just is, is a group that is just growing every month now um, with all these protocols that we are sharing amongst each other. I just want to thank everyone for all your support as usual and um, stay tuned for more Cannabis Social Club videos and uh, we'll see you soon.